Many of us have had questions about the zip wake system. So what we did is we linked up with the group at Imtra and actually got a set installed on our Orion 29. So what we got right now is we got Jamie and Conrad that are with us. So we're gonna take you through the entire process, what it took to install these on our 29 Orion and what the benefits are. So we're gonna run through the boat offshore today, have a lot of fun, get the drone up in the air and just learn as much as we can. So any questions you guys have, drop them in the comments and we'll do our best to answer them. Let's go have some fun. something very interesting for you all today we're actually installing a set of zip wakes on our 29 Orion right here in our tiny little shop which is something we haven't done before so we have Paul and Steve from Imtra which are gonna go through a little bit of detail about what zip wake is all about and then ultimately walk us through the installation on our, our Orion so Paul if you can come on over and just walk us through what we're seeing sure. here we have our zip wake which models this series E 400 E 400E. 400E kit. And everything comes in a kit that you need, a pair of interceptors, a distribution unit, which is sort of where all of the uh, wires from the interceptor kind of meet up, and also power the control panel. And then there's an extension wire in here, and also these wire covers, if you can't run the wire straight through the transom, they got a plan B right in the box. So there's lots of options on ways to install. But everything you need is in this kit. Uh, on bigger boats, sometimes you might need a, an extension. You can run uh, multiple sets of zip wakes off of one system, so it, it can be expanded as well. But on most of these boats, like this boat, it's a real simple pair of interceptors, one distribution unit, one control panel. Should be a real straightforward install. So basically how I'd like to go through this is I'm gonna ask some guys some questions because they're legitimate questions. I want to get them answered on camera so you guys can learn along with us, which is the whole point of this. So Steve, why did we choose this size? I see we went, you have a template set up there, are different sizes, why Why did we go with this one in particular? Okay, so we have different um, different sizes of interceptors available. This one in particular is a 400, 400 ease, 400 millimeters long. And you can see that we have covered up most of the usable transom areas. This is really a perfect, perfect placement for this particular interceptor. And we'll do the same on both sides of the boat. So okay. one of the one of the things we is very very important to, to check is before we start the installation is that we make sure that our transom surface is flat. Okay, so we just put a straight edge, and we just make sure that we don't have any any uh, wobble or any uh, irregularities in the transom. Go across the transom and also top to bottom. And um, we have checked we've checked this earlier, and there we're within a two millimeters of perfection. So and that's that's good enough for you guys. Yeah, that's that's, that's one thing we brought up because this Orion does have kind of a rounded transom. So we wanted to make sure that the zip wake was compatible for this, and we didn't have to do any major, yeah. you know, grinding or anything which we wanted to stay away from. So we were yeah. within the yeah. tolerance that you guys are okay yeah. with. So if you get that right, if you if you pay attention to the detail, one of the great things about uh, zip wake is it comes with a really great uh, installation manual, very clearly written right down to the, every single tool you will need for the install. Perfect. So taking a look at the box, you can see you have things color coded here. I'm just looking real briefly at the instruction manual. We can see the intercept, interceptor control panel and distribution unit here. Explain to us what the what the concept is and idea with this instruction setup. Oh, it's very graphic, as you can see, and uh, there seems to be a lot on uh, mounting the install, uh, the interceptors, but there's really two ways to mount them, depending on how you need or want to run a wire. So it gives you some options, and then it goes into the distribution unit and the control panel. But I would say the three major do's on install of the system is nice and flat, uh, not too much sealant, and then mind the torque settings when you see them for the motors and for the cover plates. All right, so there are details there you mentioned to us before, not too much sealant. Some of us may be compelled to, you know, 
cased on 5200, 4200, whatever you use here, just to make sure that thing sticks. The idea there's components in there where you don't want that sealant to melt its way through and ultimately seize your interceptor. So we're gonna get into that. I'm learning again here. I picked up a couple things from the last time we went through it. So we're gonna all go through it here in a minute and we're excited to bring you guys along. All right, so see, what are we gonna start with now? Yeah, so we have our template up, up against the uh, transom with some tape holding them in place. Uh, it's firmly in place right now. So we've got, we've got six marks. These are for our mounting screws. And we have a seventh mark, and that is for if we're going to move, if we're going to pass our cable. The cleanest installation is if we're able to pass the cable directly through this hole into the boat. So when you, I normally start off just with a Sharpie and I'll, I'll mark each. Each hole has, uh, has been punched out for you. I usually like to just mark it, with a, mark it with a Sharpie first. I like to be as accurate as possible with it. It doesn't do any harm to be accurate. Um, <laughs> all right, so I start, I start with that. The next, next thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna gently remove this. We're gonna remove our template. You can see we have, now we have our one, two, three, four, five, six mounting holes and our cable hole. Okay, so the next stage will be to, I like to center punch the, punch the holes just so I don't get any wander on the drill bit when I first make the, the pilot hole. So I'm just gonna go over each. You'll see from the template that, and from the manual that gives you the, uh, the drill size. Uh, we're gonna use a three mil pilot, pilot drill, which is a one eighth, or we're gonna use a six and a half millimeter to finish the hole off, to prepare it for the, um, mount, the mounting bolts. Again, I like to use, I like to use a little dr drill guide so the, hole, so the uh, drill bit goes in perfectly, perfectly straight. So on and so we go around all the holes that way uh, first with the pilot bit and then we follow up with a quarter inch or 6.5 mil bit to get those holes ready ready to receive the uh, mounting bolts or mounting screws i should say So we've, we've made our, our holes for the, the screws, the mounting screws. We have one hole left to do. We've already checked with our, with our drill bit that we have access right through the boat to a clear area behind the transom. Now we're going to ex extend the cable hole to 19 millimeters or three quarter to accept the cable gland, the waterproof cable gland. All right, so I use an, a step drill bit. Uh, it just helps the, stops the, again, the drill bit from walking around. Uh, I'm going to start off with a, Step a little bit. Once I get to a, once I get to about nineteen, about nineteen, I change to a regular three quarter bit. Oh my god, I haven't seen that. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. So we have a nice clean 19 mil hole. We can use the vacuum and get ready for the next step. Okay, now we're at the stage where we're going to actually mount the backing plate to the transom. Um, you can see that we've already pre-drilled the holes using the template that's supplied with the kit. And we, we've put our backing plate up to the transom and we can see that we've got a really nice flat surface with no rock. Um, the, this is, the, ne the next step is quite, is probably one of the most important steps that we have and its placement of the sealant. Okay. So we've chosen 3M 4200 Fast Cure. Uh, we've gone with black today. Um, we've already prepared our, prepared our tube. And we're not gonna use a lot of this, but where we put it is, uh, is critical. Uh, so we're gonna start off by, by putting a little on the holes themselves, on the, on the mounting holes where the screws are gonna go through. I'm uh, gonna start there. This would be the important part right here. Um, we only have two places where sealant is applied. Don't apply sealant anywhere on this. Uh, behind these screws are, is the mechanism, and we don't want to get any uh, sealant working its right way through into the mechanism at all. All right, so we're gonna put a little bit, a ring of sealant around each hole, okay? 
we need enough, but we don't have to go crazy. Okay. And we have six holes in total for this particular size interceptor. And the last bead, there's a track on the very bottom of the interceptor itself, and we do a nice little bead along there as well. And of course, all of this is all of this is explained in the installation guide that comes with every kit. Some extra sealant will sque naturally squeeze out, but we'll clean that up after the fact. So we have our interceptor backing plate, and we have our screws, and we're going to start by placing a couple of screws in the in the backing plate, and we're going to present it up to the hole. It's often useful if you have somebody doing this with you; they can pass can pass you tools. We've got two started, started by hand, and we're gonna use our impact to go right in. Okay. There is no torque setting for this, but it should be tight against the hull. Okay, so after I've done this, I will take my uh, my little T40 T40 angled wrench, and I'll just make sure that everything is nice and tight. From this point, we can remove the extra the excess sealant, which may have come out through the side. If you use just the right amount, you'll get very little that will uh, squeeze out, and uh, that's cleaned with mineral spirits. Here we can go on to the next step. Okay, now we're, we're at the uh, stage of the process where we're going to install the servo motor. So the first thing you want to do is just remove that, just remove the nut from the stem of the through hull. Okay, we're going directly into the hull this time through the backing plate, which is one of the cleanest, neatest options that we have. Uh, take off the nut and just pull the cable right back, pull the end until it comes right back to the end of the stem. All right. So this is where a second person helps a lot. We don't want this little cable to fall as we push it through into the boat, fall into any standing water uh, or anything like that. So it's good if you have a second person to grab this from the inside and they will also put the nut on for you. One of the things we all just want to want to do is you can see there's an O-ring on the bottom here, which provides the seal. What we want to do also is put a little bit of um, sealant, adhesive sealant on these threads. So I'm gonna start off by doing that. Obviously, we don't want any water going into the transom material from the uh, from the outside. So, once I put a little bit of that on, okay, that's enough. And now I'm going to pass this piece. You see the O-ring; it's in place. I'm going to push it into the hole that we've already made as part of the setup to this. Okay, you can see it sits nicely in there. And what actually happens is after we pass the cable through, this little servo motor will actually push on that, um, push on that pass through, and the nut will also compress it against the hull. All right, so the next part for me is going to be to pass through the cable to my helper inside. Okay, just pulling that through for me. Just un unwind the cable, push it through. And now this is the, okay. if we just stop right there, this is the important part. And I turn the, turn the servo motor over and you can see that there's a worm gear and a little block. This little block is gonna sit inside this slide. Okay, and this is what actually actu actuates the, the interceptor. We first of all wanna move this slide to the position closest to the motor body. Okay, you can actually hold, we can hold that by, the, by holding here. Okay, so I'm gonna push this through. And now this is all going to seat. It's going to seat nicely. And you can see that it goes in. Nothing has moved. It now sits nicely against the backing plate. And here we have to, we hold this with three screws. There are uh, Torx 25. We have three of them. And we do have a Torx setting for this. We got this little tool from a bike store. The settings for the screws are in newton meters. 
Um, they range from two to eight on this particular little torque wrench. We set the torque wrench to two newton meters. Turn the screws in to hold the servo motor in place. Okay, until we hear that. The click from the torque. Little torque wrench, we now know that we've got the, we've got the required torque. Okay. And we have three screws, again that's T25. Okay, we can uh, go everything, round everything one more time. And this part is complete. Okay, now we're at the part of the process where we're going to install the cover plate of the interceptor. Just before we put it on, just take a little look at the interceptor and make sure we have these three little, three little rollers are in place, that they haven't fallen out while we've been handling it, okay? We can press the interceptor first and we're just going to present it to the backing plate. All right, simple as that. Okay, we have two different, two different screw sizes to hold this on. On the top we have T30s, two on this particular interceptor, four T40s along the bottom. And both have different, different torques, okay? So I just generally start these by hand. Now this is one of the most simple parts of the process, but also an important part because each screw has a, a definite, a definite torque to be applied. Okay, I have my T30 and T40 bits ready to go. I'm gonna use an impact just to drive the screw in. It's quite a long thread. I'm gonna just drive it in close to the front of the uh, interceptor. Okay. I'm going to change bits. Now we haven't actually torqued down the, the cover yet. So for this I'm going to go to a torque wrench set to 15 newton meters for the large screws and 7 newton meters for the smaller screws. I, st I, I like to start in the center and work outwards so I'll, I'll go this way, this pattern. Uh, similar to if you were doing something like maybe a cylinder head on a car. Again, I'm trying, trying to achieve 15, 15 newton meters. Okay. This, this part is now complete and we're going to move over to the other side. One thing we will do, just to confirm that we have the torque right on this, uh, the system has something that we call interceptor check which will run the interceptors in and out several times and measure a load. Um, and that will give us a really good indication when we come to do setup, if we've done this part uh, correctly. So I have my good friend Jamie here from Intra. Jamie, thank you very much. Good they job. flew out here. We have Conrad in the back as well with his iPhone. Don't hide from us, buddy. So thank you for flying out here, first of all. Thank you for working with us on the Orion. We've been really excited about the product so far, but what I understand is we don't know half of what this thing is capable of. So what we wanted to learn from you was what are the capabilities? Teach us how to use it properly. We want to video and show you know, our viewers exactly what this thing can do. So what do we have in store today? Yeah, so beautiful day down here in Miami. Happy to be with you guys. We've got an awesome Orion 29, beautiful boat with uh, twin 300s. Uh, we got set of 400 Series E interceptors on there, which is a really great fit for this boat and any, and any outboard boat, fantastic fit. Um, we're gonna get on the water today and show you guys some of the best features the system has to offer. All the auto features such as pitch, roll control, um, auto turn. Uh, we're also gonna show you some other features that are in there like safety, steering, in case you get into some situations. But today we'll have a great day. We'll get on the water and be able to show you real time exactly what the system can do for you. Perfect, and what we're here to do guys is like we said, we try to learn from the experts. You guys ask your questions as well. We're gonna do our best to answer them, as I mentioned in the comments. And if we don't know the answer to it, we're gonna call Jamie up and bother him about it, but we're gonna get those answered for you. So let's go make it happen. Okay, so we're gonna run a couple of tests. One of the things that the Zipwake is great at is eliminating bow rise. So basically, Jamie, you can elaborate on this, but it does dig those tabs in just to be able to keep that bow down as you launch and then immediately pops up when you get up on plane. Is that what we're doing? Yep, design's got a pitch curve there. So when you come out of the hole at your low speeds, 
Gonna drop the interceptor blades down 100%, give you a max lift generation out of the hole, which keeps your bow down, visibility really nice. And as you get up over the hump and on the plane, it automatically knows to start bringing the blades up because you don't need as much lift at that point. So it's gonna do that throughout your whole range. All right, so the first one we're gonna do is with the system completely off to see what the boat does naturally with no tabs at all. Let's go ahead, Jason, hold on to something. Here we go. Three, two, one. Pretty good with nothing. She's pretty balanced. <laughs> so we jumped up on plane. This Orion is very well balanced. It has that 220 gallon fuel tank down the center. So you don't get a ton of bow rise. We'll see what the drone shows. And now we're gonna test it again with the zip wake system engaged. All right, here we go. Three, two, one, lift off. And so it is a noticeable difference. We had no bow rise whatsoever. Yeah, you're gonna see a noticeable difference. This boat's really balanced. I mean, some boats are gonna be uh, much more obvious because not all boats are as balanced as this Orion, but uh, as you can see there, very little bow rise. Visibility was completely clear the whole time throughout the whole shot, um, and efficiency is maximized there. Yeah, also, we're not really loaded down. We have about half a tank of fuel. We have, what do we got? Four or five guys on the boat, no fishing gear. So if you're loaded up with a full live well, you know, a ton of ice, all your fishing gear, that's when you're really gonna notice that, that difference in keeping that bow down without having to push people to the bow in order to get up on plane. Full auto is really the best feature of the zip wake system. So you don't have to worry about your pitch or your roll throughout your throttle range. It's gonna do it for you automatically using that GPS accelerometer and 3D gyro sensor. But one of the biggest uh, adjustments you can have here is this larger outer wheel on the control. That's gonna be your auto roll level sensitivity. It comes set at five at a default dead center in the scale. So if you want to turn it up to a 10 as max, that would be uh, the gyro is going to act quicker to the interceptors. Uh, if you if it's too aggressive, you can turn it down to a two or three lower in the scale. And in that, um, you know, that time is going to be uh, damper down a little bit and it's going to be less less of uh, reactive to the gyro. So depending on how much coverage you have for interceptor on the transom and, and what kind of boat you have, you can adjust that in between to find that perfect sweet spot for your boat. Yeah, so this Orion 29 is kind of a unique setup. We were pretty limited uh, span wise, side to side with the motors. Uh, we actually decided to go with the new 400 millimeter Series E, which is uh, a newer uh, unit from Zipwake. It's gonna have not that 30 mil stroke that the Series S has, it has a 60 mil stroke. Really great for situations, center console boats that have twins, triples, quads, even more motors that have limited space outboard of the props because of uh, ventilation issues. We're able to utilize that shorter span and get a deeper stroke out of that. So more lift generation out of a shorter span. One thing we wanted to try here so you can see what the zip wake is capable of is we have everybody off to the starboard side of the boat. So we got Jason, Jamie, Conrad, and Eric tucked below. We're capturing this also on the drone so you can see it from up above. And I'm gonna click it in gear on auto, mid motion so we can see what the thing actually does. All right, so you can see we're leaning quite a bit over to the starboard side. I'll go ahead and hold the auto button, kicked it in gear. There we go. Leveled it out. You can see they haven't moved a foot, an inch, and we're running perfectly level. Pretty impressive what difference it can make. So someone that doesn't know how to use tabs or really doesn't want to deal with it, you put this thing on auto and it just handles all the work for you. So now what we're gonna do here, we'll be utilizing the turn assist that's built into the zip wake. So not only is it gonna do your pitch and your roll control, it also has turn assist built in. So if you have a boat that really struggles to go through turns and make efficient turns, uh, it's gonna use that interceptor lift generation to help you carve through a turn. So if you have a boat that really struggles to get through an efficient turn, it's gonna drop that outer interceptor generate lift on the outboard side and help you carve through the turn. And on the other side of uh, things, if you have a boat that's carving too hard, the accelerometer is going to pick up that angle and it's actually going to drop that inner interceptor and give you more stability on the inside edge. So that what this does is it really makes you maximize your turn efficiency and nice smooth turn. Very cool. Let's try it out. All right, so I'm going to attempt to do two turns as close as possible one to the other so we can simulate the two. So right now we have the system off. Uh, 
Hold on. <laughs> All right. Ready? She's pretty tight. And not a bad turn. <laughs> so tight. Yeah. <laughs> I think for the next the next zip zip wake demonstration we gotta get a boat that doesn't perform like this yeah. Orion does. That's exactly. why we like this thing so Fun much. Day. But we definitely notice the difference, so I'm sure we're gonna notice it here as well. What I can almost try to do is see if I can like run into that same circle. So you wanna engage it? Yeah, you can put it in auto. See if I can let's see if I can beat that. Alright, here we go. Similar line. Whoa! Hold on! Holy crap! Tighter, right? Dude, a lot tighter. Yep. What is this? <laughs> that is insane. You also wow. get that feeling like it holds you to the water kind of deal. Yeah, yeah, no. At first I was a little nervous of what it was going to do, but I mean, it really sat us down into that turn and felt really comfortable and we, I, you know, I'm pretty sure we could maybe get those drone videos and, and overlay them in some way. I'm testing Eric and Jason here and their capabilities, but I'm pretty sure we can't do that. I'm pretty sure we can, we can get an idea and, and we definitely beat that first uh, oh, yeah. 360 by a bit. You can see it. That's, that's, that's badass. Very noticeable. These zip wakes, I'll, I'll keep telling you, you got to test this stuff in person to be able to really understand it and uh, see what it's capable of. It's been super impressive on this Orion so far. And the best part is that you don't even have to think about it. I know how to run trim tabs like everyone else. I've been boating since I was little. I have a few years experience on their center consoles only, um, but it's nice to not have to worry about it at all. You just put it on cruise control. If you're hanging out with your family, friends, fishing, whatever it is you're doing, it seems to know exactly what it needs to do at any given time. And, and we really appreciate that. Another really great feature that a lot of people don't know that the Zipwake system has, which can come in really good handy. Say you ever have a steering failure, uh, power steering failure and you're offshore and, and you need to get back to land. Um, really nice feature is there's an emerging steer, uh, steering feature in there. So what you're gonna do is put the boat in manual. Um, you're gonna detent your outer wheel down. And at the bottom of the screen, you're gonna see steering pop up. And what you can do here is you have to be up on a planing speed, but you're gonna be able to get your, your boat back to port in the general vicinity. You're probably gonna to need a tow at slower speeds to get in the dock, but you know you can travel 10, 15, 20 miles with your interceptors. You can actually use your interceptors to steer. So you can really? use this outer wheel to go starboard or port. And obviously we're gonna need enough flow at, at speed to generate lift to be able to steer. It's not gonna work at slow speeds, non-planing speeds, but as you'll see here when we do the video, it's really effective in a boat like this. You're gonna be able to center your boat back, get it back to shore in a, in, a, in a safe area, and then you can call somebody and give you a tow if you need a tow. But the nice thing about this is you still have a way to steer the boat if you get in an emergency situation. That's really cool. Let's give that a shot. Basically what you can do, you can just get the boat up to a plane and then keep the steering centered and then you can use your interceptors to steer the boat side to side. It's really easy. You'll be probably shocked how easy you can steer with it. You can literally turn the boat in circles and stuff. Really? All right, so I'm gonna get the boat on plane. Get a straight line here where you got nothing in the way. Although I trust, I trust you. Let's get some open water. Yep. Then you just lose, lose your, yeah, turn it side to side. You can, you can, go ahead, there you go. Keep going, you'll start turning. See how you're going to wow. starboard now? Yep. Starboard and the harder you turn. go, the harder you go, it'll keep turning you. Then if you want to go back to the other way, you can go back. So we're steering the boat only using the zip wake tab back there. There you go, we'll start coming back to port now. Look at that. That is cool. That's pretty wild, right? That is a nice little feature to have for sure. So you never know what's gonna happen, so being able to have a fail safe like that, always good to have. And again, I didn't even know that existed on the zip wake till right now, so thanks for sharing that. Very cool. So we came outside of Stillsville right now just to find a little bit more of a chop. So there's nothing crazy out here. It's maybe two to three. As you can see, we're kind of going up and down. You never can uh, tell through video what we're actually experiencing, but we're going to try 
running just a head C right now. We got the drone up in the air so we can see the difference. The system is off at the moment. And then we're gonna engage it. So you can see the engines are trimmed all the way down. And this is basically as if we were running with no tab at all. That's gonna be perfect. Yeah. But we're not running terribly. But let's see what happens when we turn the system on right here. You can see it brings the nose down already a little bit. And if I wanted to give it extra, I can actually roll this tab right here and bring the bow down slightly more depending on what the situation calls for. So I'm gonna give it a little more gas now that the tabs are in motion. And you can see the difference. If we didn't have the zip wakes on, we wouldn't be running at the speed most likely. And again, if I wanna bring the bow up a hair, I can do that manually. Now I'm gonna try the same thing, a following C. So I turn the system off. Again, the trim tabs, I mean, the, the engine trim is all the way down at the moment. You can see we're kind of riding a wave. So normally I would trim the engines up a little bit. I'm just kind of seeing what, what it does with nothing on compared to now what the system is. So as you can see, I didn't do anything with the engine trim and just engaging the zip wakes on auto, it actually lifted the bow a little bit, which is exactly what I want to do in a following C. So with no trim tab at all, I was burying that nose and kind of stuffing the boat a little bit without touching the engine trim, maintaining it at zero trim, trimmed all the way down. We're actually cruising nice and easy right here. We got the bow up out of the air exactly how we run, want to run the boat on auto mode without having to touch any manual setting whatsoever. One thing that's brought up pretty consistently is what does the zip wake do to fuel economy? So basically what I'm doing right now, I have this thing on manual mode, 0%, and we're doing 1.98 miles per gallon at 35 miles per hour, trimmed at about 9%. So what I'm gonna do is actually engage the system on auto. I'm not gonna touch anything else to see if we change from that 9.6 that we're at right now, in the same exact condition running through Stiltsville. Now, basically what these things are, oh, actually we, we've increased a hair right there. And again, 35 miles an hour, system was engaged, so it's doing its thing, leveling us out with the pitch and roll. And we're still at the 1.6, 1 1.96, 1 I'm sorry, miles per gallon. Now 1.93, and we've seen everything from 1.98 back up to 1.95. So again, the question, does this affect your fuel economy? I have not seen any sort of noticeable difference. It's actually stayed pretty much exactly the same while it's engaged and doing what the zip weight does, eliminating pitch and roll on your boat automatically without having to touch a thing. We're gonna go over the software update for Zipwake System Series E. Really simple, you're gonna simply download your uh, software update from zipwake.com under support downloads. Uh, put it onto a thumb drive. Really simple, you're gonna to wanna to make sure your Zipwake system is turned off and not powered on. And you're gonna slide your zip file into the back of the control panel, right in the USB port. Once you put that in the, in the port, system has to be on, then you're gonna turn the system on. System's gonna boot up and it's automatically gonna prompt you into your software update, so just follow the screen. You're gonna hit next, and then it's gonna read the software file. Not only is it gonna update your control head, but it's also gonna update your servos on each unit. As you can see here, all your devices are gonna show you what type of software you currently have and what it needs to go to. So we're at 3.3 across the board here. We need to update to the latest software, 3.4. You're gonna hit start, and it's gonna update all the, all the systems on your uh, setup. Once the software is done, you're gonna simply hit next when everything says okay. 
and then you can remove your USB flash stick and that's it. Really simple, quick way of doing your software updates. Really important, they're currently coming up with new updates, not only for ride characteristics, but also cleaning functions and uh, a bunch of different features. So you get the bulletins and it shows you all the new features for each software. So that sums up our day with Jamie and Conrad from Imtra. Definitely appreciate you guys coming out here once again and showing us what this stuff is really capable of. We didn't know a good percentage of what we needed to know to be able to operate this stuff properly. And that's the whole point of creating these videos for us to learn, pass along that information to you guys. And hopefully if you're in the market for a zip wake, this video is helpful to you. So thank you guys once again. Thanks, Alan. Thanks for having us. Thank you. We're gonna grab some lunch here at Monty's. Any questions you guys have, once again, drop them in the comments. We'll be more than happy to answer those for you. Like, subscribe, pass this information to anybody that's interested in a zip wake system and hopefully it helps them out as well. My name is Alan with Center Consoles Only and we'll see you again soon.